For as long as man has sailed the open sea, it still remains an enigma, a mystery in parts, for its depths have yet to be fully explored. Still, men will challenge the mystery, as did two young naval officers on the third day of June, 1952. They could not know that day one of them would never return, at least in this life, and the other would only return as a stranger a quarter of a century later. John, wait. Honey, I'm a half hour late already. I want to get off before the sun sets. You ran out so fast you didn't have a chance to say goodbye. I'm sorry. Well, it uh, looks like you're the skipper now, so I want you to take care of things, okay? Yes, sir. Good. Will you take me next time, Dad? Oh, Johnny, you know I will. I'd take you this time, except big race, Bermuda Cup. Only two crew members, no stowaways. I understand, Dad. Hey, I'll make you an old salt yet, okay? Well, if, he, uh, if the wind keeps up, I think we'll be off Point Roberts by midnight. You're going to have to keep your promise one of these days. I will. But why do you bring it up now? Because you keep promising and nothing ever happens. He really needs you, John. And so do I. What's that supposed to mean? I guess I just get jealous of the Amanda, too. I think that boat's your real love. Hey. Sexy lady. You just keep the bed warm. Till I come back, okay? I'll try. To be sure you come back a winner, I had your father's good luck piece put on a chain. Hey! I love you, John Kelty. Remember that. Hey, take over the wheel, eh? Coming up, that's good. Say, how come uh, Amanda didn't come down to see us off? Well, it was my idea. I thought it might be easier. She didn't want me to go on this trip in the first place. Mm. Now, Betty couldn't wait for me to leave. You should have seen her with that Hardy kid. She was all over him. Well, I'm sorry about the way things turned out. I mean, it was crazy. What? I said I'm sorry. Doesn't make any difference. I'll never see her again anyway. Well, are you two splitting up? In a way. I'm not going back. What are you talking about? Just a little change in direction. We get close enough to St. George, and I'm going to swim ashore. You're what? Yeah, it's all set. I've got a contact waiting there for me. I'm defecting, Johnny. That's the word for it. Oh, come on. Knock it off. You want to come along? It's all right. I just I told him I'd ask you. You told him? You implicated me? No. I just said you're fed up with naval intelligence. That's all. It's true, isn't it? No. No, I asked for a transfer mainly because I'm bored with my job. That's all. Well, I just livened up your life a little bit anyway. I'll take the wheel. All right, but I'm not going back.
20 degrees, 12 minutes west. Whiskey Yankee Zebra, 3904, this is Coast Guard Coordination Center. Joe, breaking up. How are you feeling? Where am I? Coast Guard Station. One of our cutters picked you up this morning. Oh. How long was I at sea? Uh, they thought a couple of days, maybe. What about Dick? Who, sir? Dick Ayers. He was with me aboard the Amanda, too. I'm sorry, there was only you. Oh, I guess I'm lucky to be alive. I wasn't sure that anybody heard my Mayday. Mayday? That was our normal patrol area, sir. We never got a Mayday. That's impossible. That storm hit us like a tornado. It tore us apart. You must have seen it on radar. Sir, there hasn't been a storm in this area for almost a month. Sir, do you feel up to answering a few questions? Well, the water got to most of your papers, but uh, we could read your IDs. Uh, your name's John Kelty, Lieutenant Commander, Naval Intelligence, Southern Region, Atlantic Fleet. That's... You're 32 years old. Look, what is this? Well, there seem to be some discrepancies, sir. Now, uh, this photo on your naval ident, it, it certainly looks like you. But what? Well, the date, and the date on your driver's license. It says 1952. That's right. Well, that was nearly 25 years ago. What's the joke? Well, I was hoping you could tell us. And your boat registration. Um, Eagle Rock Harbor has no record of an Amanda II. Well, that's ridiculous. I have a slip there, B-79. You can check with the harbor master. Would you, uh, would you mind if I telephoned my wife and told her that I was all right? That's probably a very good idea. She might be able to help straighten this all out. You can use this one. There's no dial. Well, it's a push button. Look, you've been through quite an ordeal. Uh, Eagle Rock, right? Yes. 33 Elm Drive. This is Amanda Kelty. Uh, yes, operator. Uh, area code for Eagle Rock, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, what's your phone number? Klondike 2759. Hello? The prefix you have just dialed is no longer in service. Well, Please check your directory or... What do you mean this... This, this prefix is no longer being used. This is my home number. you have just dialed is no longer in service. Did you hear what I said? This is my... You dial O operator for assistance. The prefix you have just dialed... You have everything recorded, haven't you? Well, that must be the phone company's automatic answering service, sir. Why are you trying to confuse me? Look, maybe you better get some rest, huh? There's no boat slip with that number at Eagle Rock anymore. That part of the marina is just a bunch of buildings now. But I sailed out of that boat slip a couple of days ago. Oh, no, just, just relax, sir, please. What, what, what are you two trying to do? I, you're just a little disoriented, that's all. Ah. Uh, I, uh... I used to interrogate people myself. I know all the techniques. I'm sure you do. You think that I plan to go over like heirs, don't you? I didn't. I wasn't going to do that. Now, you've got to believe me. We do. Now, just relax, please. I want you to call my naval base. 
Ask for Captain Ellis. He'll straighten us out. Sir, we've already checked with the naval base. According to their records, there is no Lieutenant Commander John Kelty. So just to be sure, I ran the serial number through the computer in Washington. There was Lieutenant Commander John Kelty, but he was officially declared lost at sea in 1952. Kelty? Is that his file? Yeah. For some reason, we still had it. Kelty. John Kelty. Oh, yes. Yeah, I remember now. I hadn't been here very long, but it caused quite a stir. Nothing much in his record. Wouldn't be. We sent it all to the Pentagon. Top secret. Security? Security Lee. Two of our intelligence officers. They set off to sail in a cup race of Bermuda, I think. Anyway, we had proof that one of them planned to defect a cryptographer named um, Ayers. British authorities agreed to hold him for us. Our agents flew over to pick him up, but the boat never arrived. Just disappeared. Strange, isn't it? After all these years. Was Kelty ever charged? No. No evidence. But they were close friends, so he was under suspicion. That's probably why we still have a file on him. Doesn't make any sense. Kelty would be about 55. Coast Guard says their man looks somewhere in his 30s, and he matches the IDs he's got. An imposter would know Kelty's age. So what do we got, a psycho? I don't know. Sure like to talk to him, though, because if they're not forgeries, how do you get Kelty's papers? All right. Tell him to hold and fingerprint him. You drive down and pick him up. I want him back here for questioning tomorrow morning. Yes, sir. The Navy just called back. They did find some records on you. I told you. 1952. Anyway, please don't start with 1977 again, all right? Look, it's all going to be straightened out. A Commander Lear is on his way down here from your base. They ask you some questions. Look at your papers. They'd also like to check your fingerprints. No. I've answered all the questions I intend to. Now I want some answers. I want to see my wife. I have to. She must be frantic. Look, you can't leave. I'm not your prisoner. You can't hold me. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. No. Officer Parks. All quiet, sir. No, he'll be ready for Commander Lear. Oh. Does he really look like this? Yes, sir. 
Somebody's done an expert job. Lieutenant, how did he react when you told him this was in 1952? <laughs> like I was the one who was crazy. That's it? Well, he, uh, he did seem sort of paranoid. Uh, kind of, uh, suspicious of everything I said, like I was trying to confuse him or, or make him admit something. Did he mention a man named Ayers? Yes, sir, he did. Exactly what did he say? Something about uh, not being involved, uh, not going over. It didn't make much sense. We'll see. Now, you say he mentioned his wife. Yes, sir, uh, Amanda, 33 Elm Drive, uh, Eagle Rock. southern and central America, and civil war in Angola. On the national scene, there are still mixed reactions to President Carter's amnesty bill. How do you feel about the pardon? Pardon? Yeah, who cares? Right? Where did it happen, Korea? You must be putting me on, man. Korea? That was two wars ago. <laughs> You must be stoned on something good. Thirty-three Elm Drive. I can give you Elm Drive, but no thirty-three. Elm and Jefferson. That's different. No sweat. There you go, pal. Elm and what used to be Jefferson. That'll be two eighty. It can't be. Right there on the meter, pal. 280. Where's 33? My house, all the other houses. Pal, there hasn't been any houses here in five or six years. They tore them down and put up the mall. But just yesterday. Look, did you want Elman Jefferson or didn't you? There must be some mistake. No mistake. Are you sure? That this is Elman Jefferson? I don't know. I've been hacking here since 1966. Hey, hold it, mate. 
Mr. Hardy. I'm John Kelsey. Kelsey? You uh, and your son Billy used to take care of my boat, the Amanda too. The Amanda too? I... Remember? You, you, you fixed my magnetic compass when Dick Ayers and I set out for Bermuda. It was in June, 1952, you must remember. Why, yes. Oh, but she was wrecked so long ago. It was never found. And uh, 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 Kelty and Ayers, they drowned. No. Yes. Just like my Billy, a few years later. Suspicion. He never came back. But I did, Mr. Hardy. I'm John Kelty. John Jr., of course. You, you were just a youngster the last time I saw you. I, I certainly favor your father in looks. Mr. Hardy, I know this sounds insane, but I am not my own son. I am John Kelty Sr. I didn't drown in that shipwreck. I came back. I'm alive. You can't be. I know I haven't changed. I, I, I can't explain that. Uh, I, somehow I have lost 25 years. But I am alive. No. No, it isn't possible. Mr. Hardy. Mr. Hardy. They're looking for me. I'll explain all this to you, but please don't tell them that I was here. Not until later. I want to talk to you about Billy. Please. Now, we're looking for a man dressed in a yeoman's uniform, Coast Guard. It's very important that we find him. Can you help us out at all? You don't know. Mrs. Ayers? Her daughter, Tracy. Um, yes, uh, you, I think that, uh, I think we might have some mutual friends. I, uh, I just came in from out of town. I was wondering if I could come over and talk with you. Ah. Tracy Ayers? John, Parks. Uh, look, if I'm intruding. No, 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 no. I like surprise. Makes life interesting, you know. I'm looking for a relative. <laughs> That's cool. We're all looking for somebody. C'est la vie, right? The woman I'm looking for is Mrs. John Kelty. Amanda Kelty. I thought um, maybe your mother could give me her address. They're friends. My mother's dead. She was so young, it doesn't seem... Well, uh, she had a rough life, you know, all that happened, and... What happened? Look, it's not a very interesting story. Why don't you just sit down here and relax and we'll talk and... Please. I'm very interested. Tell me. My father went off and got lost at sea. And my mother got nothing but a lot of bad publicity. But why? Because they knew he never intended to come back. He was a turncoat, you know, like in Vietnam. Boy, it's one quick way to learn who your friends are. And they all turn their backs on that. All except your Mrs. Kelty. I mean, she stayed and she tried to help my mother just hang on. But then, bye-bye, Bluebird. Your mother... Uh... Hung herself from a shower pipe. 
beautiful, right? I was nine. Sorry, I... If there's anything... Nothing. Which friend of mine gave you my telephone number? Oh, there was no friend. I, um... I just said that so I couldn't tell. Well, you could be my friend. I mean, we all need friends sometimes, you know? Um, I really do have to, to find Mrs. Kelty, Amanda. Maybe you have her address. I had a couple of Christmas cards from her, but it was a long time ago. She moved up the coast to one of those new communities. Glen Harbor. I think I put it in my book. Here it is. Thank you. For what? I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't mind me. John, whoever you are. I hope you find whatever you're looking for. Would you wait a second? Joe, John. The Navy, right? Well, I don't know any John Kelty. What's your name? Yeah, I'm okay. Tell my skateboard back. Right, here you go. Didn't see you. Sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, I'm looking for Mrs. John Kelty. I understand she lives here. Mrs. Kelty? No, I'm sorry. But she has to be here. Excuse me a moment. Winchester East? Yes. Have you seen my grandchildren? They're outside skateboarding, Mrs. Johnson. Thank you. Can I let me help you? he spends at the hospital. I can understand why he doesn't have the time. Kathy, Jack, come on.
Come on, we'll be late. Can't tell me a cardiologist is busy every weekend. Those kids need him. Doesn't he know that? You all right? What? Oh, yes, I... I just thought I saw an old memory. You're getting senile, Amanda. Amanda. Amanda! Where are we going, Grandma? It's a surprise. Don't ask, Jack. Amanda! Dr. Kelty's office? No, but I'm expecting him any minute. May I take a message? Okay. And what is your number, sir? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll tell him. Mm -hmm. Hi, Doctor. Hi. Here are your messages. The ones in the top are urgent. Uh, oh, there was a call from a Dr. Schindler. He needs you for an emergency consultation on an open heart patient, and there was a call from a Commander Lear. Oh, oh, and your wife wants you to call her back right away. Oh, uh, this is Mr. Parks. He just walked in off the street complaining of chest pain. I already suggested that he go to the emergency hospital, but he insisted on waiting for you. You can go home, Miss Davis. Come in. Thirty-two. Yes. Have you been under a lot of strain lately? I'm afraid so. It shows. Your blood pressure's too high for a man your age. Well, if you can come back tomorrow, I'd like to do an EKG, check you more thoroughly. I'll try. What brought you here? I mean, there are half a dozen cardiologists listed. My father and your father were classmates at the academy together. Married? Any kids? Yes. I have a son. How old is he? Eleven. I have a boy the same age. <laughs> they do cause pressure, don't they? You spend much time with him? Not as much as I should. I have to be away quite a bit of the time. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Parents alive? No, my father died at sea. Oh. Recently? Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe those chest pains are related to that. I never spent much time with him. Like father, like son. I beg your pardon? I mean, the circle completes itself, doesn't it? We give to our children what we get from our parents. I hope you remember that when you... See you, boy. 
Yeah. Well, I think that's all I need right now. I mean, it doesn't have to happen, does it? People can change. Of course they can if they want to. It's never too late. You can always go back, try again, make up for things. Yes. Yes, it's the only way. To start over again. Thank you. Look, I'm a few years older than you, but I know how you feel. We all carry guilt. Now, if you'd like to come back tomorrow, no. No. I can't. I don't belong here. What are you doing here? I need your help. You listen to me. You know who I am. No. I thought about it, what you said. I wanted to believe it. Because I thought, if you've come back, then maybe my Billy I'm getting old, but I'm not crazy. Nobody comes back. My Billy is not coming back. Nothing is going to bring him back. I want you to go. Whoever you are, just leave me alone. I found them. My wife. My son. We were strangers. There's nothing for me here. I need your help. I need a boat. Boat? Somewhere out there, I lost 25 years. I lost my wife, my child. But I remember the course. I charted it just a few days ago. If I had a boat like the Amanda, then there's a chance, isn't there? A chance? That I'll get back everything that I lost. Do you understand what I'm saying, Mr. Hardy? If there's a way in, There must be a way out. The son identified this? He's positive his father was wearing the medallion when he left. But how'd the other guy get it? You know, the prints were confirmed. They match? Yes, sir. I know it's crazy, but right now, all the physical evidence we have indicates the man is who he says he is, John Kelty. Shall I continue our search? Yes. Wait. No. But don't close the file. 
Maybe he'll come back. To John, with all my love, Amanda, 1952. The 20th day of June, 1977, not long after John Kelty sailed out to sea, the body of an unidentified man was found washed up in a lonely cove, a man in his 50s, whom the sea had returned to rest in peace. It's TV Land Celeb Sked 1999, where TV celebrities schedule and host an evening of the shows they love. Stay tuned. The cast of Star Trek Voyager has another one for you next. <laughs>